بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ریگارڈنگ دا ہولی قرآن دا مس کنسیپشن آئی لائک ٹو برنگ ان ڈسکشن ٹو ڈے ریلیٹس ٹو دی الیجڈ چینجز میڈ بائی حجاج ابن یوسف ان ہز ٹائمز ناؤ اٹ از سیڈ اٹ از رپورٹڈ ان اے نیریٹو اٹ از ریکارڈڈ ان دی کتاب المصاحف آف ابن ابی داؤد دیٹ ہی از رپورٹڈ ٹو ہیو چینج دا قرآن ایٹ الیون پلیسز ناؤ دس از واٹ از ریکارڈڈ ان دس نیریٹو اینڈ آن دا بیسز آف دس Uh, there are people, of course, who draw this conclusion that Hajjaj had actually made a minor ascension of the Quran. Although there is no Muslim authority who believes in this narrative because not only is it, is it absolutely baseless regarding its content, as we shall just presently see how uh, critically uh, it does not stand up to the, uh, to the uh, standards of Matan criticism, the narrative is also very weak as far as Sanad is concerned, as far as its chain of narration is concerned. However, uh, of course, since this narrative has been used by various people and has uh, led many people to think that uh, Hajjaj was actually responsible for a minor ascension of the Quran, it is important to realize, it is important to analyze this narrative and see what exactly is the truth in this matter. Now, before, uh, of course, the narrative is itself is analyzed, uh, I'm going to just give you a few examples of how Hajjaj uh, or what ha- changes Hajjaj actually make. Uh, of course, these are 11 changes at various uh, instances in the Quran. Uh, just to give you a few examples, uh, it is said that he changed the word Lam Yatasanna in Surah Baqarah, uh, verse 259, to Lam Yatasanna, adding a ha at the end. Uh, similarly, it is said that uh, in verse 48 of Surah Maida, the words originally were Shari'atan wa Minhaja. He changed them, and uh, the new, uh, the new uh, version was Shira'atan wa Minhaja. Similarly, uh, uh, at another place uh, in Surah Yunus, the words were huwallazi yunshirukum and Hajjaj changed them to huwallazi yusayyirukum. So these are uh, some of the samples or examples which I would like to present. And now I'll come to, the, uh, to, uh, to analyze how uh, we can uh, evaluate what this narrative says is true or false. Now, first of all, let's, so let us now uh, analyze what this narrative uh, says, not only vis-a-vis its matan, Uh, but also it's just not. So uh, f- as far as the matan is concerned, the foremost objection which uh, comes to mind is the fact that if this had happened, if Hajjaj had actually changed the Quran at 11 places, that how come, how is it possible that his contemporaries, uh, the, uh, some of the Sahaba were alive at his time, some of the tab- many of the Tabi'un were uh, alive at his times, that uh, they did not uh, object to what Hajjaj had done. Uh, how is this possible? We know that Abdul Malik ibn Marwan was the caliph, the Umayyad caliph in whose times it is alleged that he uh, made these changes. So how come he, had not, he could not stop Hajjaj from uh, doing so? So it is absolutely baffling that uh, if Hajjaj had done so, uh, then none of his contemporaries, none of the people who were around him uh, could have uh, even raised uh, a cry of alarm, even if it is considered that he was someone very oppressive. And if even that is considered, then why is it that even after he died, no one made this, uh, this uh, effort to rechange it back to what it originally was? So it is hard to believe at all. Similarly, we find that uh, Hajjaj in, its, in, in his own capacity was just a, a, a governor of Kufa. How could he have uh, affected all these changes in the Masaif and made this uh, a new reading? He was just a, a governor of a province. So how could a governor of a province do something, such an all-embracing thing, which would be instrumental in changing the Quran at all places. Similarly, we also know that if uh, he had, uh, for example, if he would even consider the fact for a moment that he had done so, then how could he have washed what is in the hearts? Uh, he could have changed the Messiah, uh, and that too, of course, is not very, uh, very, very plausible. But then, how could he have changed what is in the hearts? How would the Quran memorizers have uh, ch- changed uh, whatever they had in mind? They would never have uh, accepted this. And this is also virtually not possible. Similarly, we see that historians, uh, there, is not, there is not a single other instance, either in Hadith or in history, in which this, uh, this report is mentioned in, in anywhere. How could have the historians spared Hajjaj when we know that he did, did not spare him in many of the alleged you know, oppressions that he had committed when he was the ruler? So if, if he had done so, how, why wouldn't have the historians pointed this out? We don't find a single historian, uh, historian pointing this out. And uh, of course, uh, then the other thing is that The Abbasids, when they came to power, they blamed the Umayyads for a number of things. And had this happened, they would have sh- surely uh, pointed out this fact and said that one of their governors had, had changed the Quran. But the Abbasids never raised this objection. So the, for, this is, of course, very strange. Now, not only this material, not only this fact, and these facts that I have just said, they all go against this narrative. 
we on the contrary find evidence, very, very, very uh, overwhelming evidence, uh, as has been cited by Imam Baqilani, that Hajjaj, on the contrary, had made efforts to regularize the Quran, to make any, uh, to check the irregularities that might have been taking place in his empire, in his, in his uh, province. He, he had actually uh, called certain people. He had entrusted them resp the responsibility to see if the Messiah, if some errors were creeping up in the Messiah and people were wrongly reading or uh, writing those Messiah, he had actually instituted a small committee in which he would uh, depute them and tell them to go out and see. And he would even reward uh, people. He would even collect Messiah who were, who, were, who were erroneously written and reward people in return for handing over these Messiah to him. So he had actually made a department of uh, seeing if any irregularity was creeping up in the writing or even wrongly reading the Quran. So this is what uh, Bakilani uh, his, himself has furnished and, and details can be seen in his book, al Intisar al-Quran, for example. So in the light of this evidence, it is hard to believe at all that this, this narrative can, uh, can has any, any uh, weight at all. Not only, as I said, this, the matan or the content uh, uh, raises these questions, the isnad also is very, very weak. Now, uh, the reason for that is that Abad ibn Suhaib, who is a narrator of this narrative, uh, he has been uh, severely criticized by uh, these authorities. And uh, I'll just read out a few comments to you so that uh, you can very well see how our authorities of Rajal have severely uh, regarded him to be an absolutely unreliable person. So Ibn Abi Hatim, he says, that uh, Abad ibn Suhaib, uh, whose full name is Abu Bakr Abad ibn Suhaib al Kulaybi, he says that he is Zarif al Hadith and he is Munkir al Hadith and Toreka Hadithu. Yeah, of course, these are very strong comments which impugn his, his, his narrations. Uh, similarly, uh, uh, Ibn Sa'd and Bukhari uh, have uh, forsaken him. The words are uh, Tarakuhu. And Nasai says that he is Matruk al Hadith. And uh, Hesmi says that he is Matruk. Abul Fadl al Maqtisi says that he is blamed of fabricating narratives. So he, he, is, he is blamed of concocting narratives. Similarly, uh, Yahya ibn Ma'in says that he did not write anything from Abbad and he did not consider him worthy enough to, to write anything from him, and so on. We have a number of other uh, comments as well. So, in the presence of this jara, of, of, this, uh, neg of, of these negative comments on the person of Abbad ibn Suhaib, uh, we find that this isnad or the chain of narration also is absolutely unreliable. So in a nutshell, we can say that not only the matan or the content of this narrative is absolutely unreliable, and of course it raises those questions, and, and therefore uh, these questions are, 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 are convincing enough to, to tell us that uh, Hajjaj could not have done so. The, 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 the isnad of this narrative also is, uh, is severely criticized uh, by our uh, scholars, and they have shown how Abad ibn Suhaib is an absolutely unreliable narrator. So in the basis of all these facts, we can very safely conclude that it is absolutely a wrong description to this, uh, that Hajjaj had changed the Quran at the 11 places. This is uh, uh, an absolutely uh, a, a farce, it's a hoax, and it is something which has been wrongly ascribed. And one must think that not everything which is found in a, in a, in a book, uh, which is, uh, which is uh, for, uh, for example, presented by Muslims, not everything written in that book is correct. This particular narrative, as regarded in, by Ibn Abi Dawud in his Kitab al-Masahib, as I said, invokes this severe criticism not only on its matan, but also on its isnad. Akulu kawli haza wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa lisar al-Muslimina wal-Muslimat.